family members and friends, how do they feel with you doing this? Okay, that's, that's one that makes me smile all the time. <laughs> um, I mainly smile because I remember when I started female impersonation, my first performance, I literally got dressed at my aunt's home, left from her home, get my performance, and then changed back at her home to get home. Performed for approximately a year before the following year carnival season came, and then I performed at Chatti Sukumonak. Um, Two days after Chetty Sukumana, I'm sitting at home and I'm hearing uh, my dad, my mom, and my uncle uh, talk about this dancer in blue that was so amazing on stage. And it's only after listening to conversation, put tones together, and realized, wait, that dancer was me. <laughs> you know, so it's like they sat and looked at me perform, had no idea it was me. Of course, they had no idea. They knew I was going to dance class, but had no idea I was doing female appreciation. It's something that I kept away from home, mainly because. Uh, Everyone in my family is a bit more traditional and they are still stuck in the old time tradition and the old time ways. So it's something that I kept off hope. However, um, I think the turning point would have been performing in Guyana and Suriname and then coming back to one of the major weddings for Bagman Six in Trinidad and having seen the acceptance of the performance and the level of contribution to the performance, you know. It became something that was okay to be done at that point when it comes to family. So now I have the family support in the sense of performances. I mean, my dad would drive me to performances if he has to, um, and pick me up back if he has to, and things of that sort. I get dressed at home, my mom wash all my costumes, <laughs> um, you know, I'll probably leave my wig for my mom to brush off. So, you know, it's become something that's accepted. However, the topic is not discussed in more details of sexuality. It's something that's not discussed in the avenue of the home life or the family life. One last question before I turn you over to my here. Are you happy with what you're doing? Oh, I am extremely happy and I'm very excited to see what's going to happen next or where I'm going to go next. I, in my mind, I know what I'm going towards, but I'm not going to say that I'm going to be here in the next five years, because there are a lot of things that will contribute yeah. to you being yes. here. But I'm excited to take myself on that journey. Yes. So, so, so on, I, I've just heard, heard you um, spoke about um, your being able to talk about certain things, especially in your family. How does that um, influence your creativity? Because you are female impersonation, and we all know that being a female impersonator, it's a creative form, it's an art form by itself. Because being able to transform yourself from Soan into your stage name, which is Sheila, right? That by itself takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort, it has a skill, there's a skill into it because you no longer look like a male, you look like a female when you come into Sheila and come into character. How does your family influences the creativity of you? Okay, um, in the earlier stages it would have been very difficult to really do the transformation that you would want to do because of yeah. the sense that you always have to pack and go to somewhere else to get yeah. changed and then you know, you're always in a rush of getting it done. However, um, as of lately, now that it's accepted and it's welcome at home, and I'm able to do my transformation at home and leave home comfortably and things like that, it's an easier journey now. Because okay. now, if I have a performance at 8 o'clock, I can safely start getting dressed at 4 o'clock. So it takes like 4 hours wow. to get yourself out of the house, you know. It's a process of making sure your body is smooth, wax, you know, to get that smooth female feeling. Um, makeup is very important, the layers need to go on well, the coverage needs to be there well, yes. you know, so everything is a process. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the actual art of, you know, the, the stage performances, there are a lot of the preparation for those performances that are done within the space of my room, because there are certain things that you would not feel comfortable doing in front of your family, yet, yeah, because you know that yeah. this is your comfort level and this is as mm -hmm. far as they are willing to go. Yes. So you put it together in your room and then the only time the showcase is on stage. Okay. Um, and you know, um, I know people would have asked um, some when did you recognize, um, but for female impersonation, we all have times where we we'll probably go through as artists, because even as a designer, I, it depends on my mood before I design. And um, 
before I start recognizing that I was a designer, it took a process. For uh, you, when did that start? When did you recognize that you wanted to be a vegan impersonator? Was it an easy journey in? Was it um, that you saw somebody else did it? Or, or instinctively, you knew that this is what I want to do? Actually, um, strange enough to that question, if you had asked me some years back, I would never think that I would, yes. I would be a female presenter, a popular female presenter where I am today. Um, me doing it actually started about six years ago, being asked by a TASA group to yes. perform with them and support them at the TASA competition. Agreeing to do the performance, not realizing that they wanted me to do a poorly virtual, who was my teacher at that point does. Yes. Um, it's only on the day of the performance, um, you know, during further rehearsals of that day and communication, I realized what was happening. Yeah. So at that point, I'm like, no, I can't do this. And then they're like, okay, we're giving you $800 for like three minutes on stage. I'm like, okay, yes, I can do this. <laughs> so, you know, it was like a little pull and tug to get me there. But I got to Shigona's, I got up for free candies, I got everything I needed, and I got dressed and I went down to baby to do this performance and I remember like waiting stage side to go on stage and still nervous I wanted to turn around. However the instant you hit the stage, that reaction you got from the crowd at that point yes. who knew who had no idea who you were yeah. but what they reacted to was like literally what you put out on stage. I got this feeling of an overwhelming feeling of okay, this is what I want to experience on a daily basis, so yeah. this is what I want to do on a daily basis. Okay. And from then, it, it took a process of getting to where I wanted it to be. It took a lot more rehearsals, a lot more, you know, prepping. Um, it took days of coming home from work and just sitting down and experimenting with makeup and yeah. trying to see what goes with you, what complexion, what, what's good with. And eventually, um, you know, started doing weddings, started doing parties, started doing Chutney Sukha Monarch. So I actually performed at Sukha Monarch in 2010, um, which was a turning point yeah. for me in determining that, okay, I'm going to take it over because Sukha Monarch is a crowd that you would not really want to go to because you are known as a piece in your dancer yeah. mm -hmm. who's doing female impersonation. Yeah. Uh, however, the acceptance and the, the round of applause and the, the interviews after Sukumana. It it made me feel like I was doing something right and I was I was at the position where I could keep away for those to come after. Okay. Yeah. Um, so my next question I I don't want you to feel tense and stuff like that. I know this is it would make anybody feel tense sometimes because this is a topic that's very much uh, controversial in our country and, and not only Trinidad but across the Caribbean region because we found that we have a law here that is different from even the Caribbean is that there's a ban on homosexuality. Homosexuality is not allowed in our country and even being creative in homosexuality it is still not allowed um, which is unfair to many creatives. Um, right? So I want to ask you um, if somebody wants to be a female impersonator what's the first thing and most important thing that they should get or they should put in place? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I think being a female personator, um, <laughs> no, no, actually, more importantly, being a female personator, the first thing that one should do or develop or put in place okay. is uh, developing themselves mentally yes. to be faced with the challenge that they're going to be faced with. Yeah. Once you have a strong mind and you can mentally develop yourself, anything is possible. Yes. Okay. Oh, but that's good. That's good. That's good. Um, so we have to wrap up here because we really don't want to keep you. I know you have other things and we're very grateful for um, so actually to meet us here. Um, most of the people we are here in the Pento. Um So if you do hear some little bit of noise and stuff, it's because we're in the mall. It's right? because of our surrounding. Our surrounding is very much compromised. <laughs> if, someone, if someone wants to contact you for booking, uh, do you have the contact information and email yes. address? Yes, so um, I can be reached at uh, Sohan, that's S O H A N dot Badal, B E D E L L, at gmail.com or 374 5885. Okay, that's good. Right. So, what advice would you give to other young persons um, who want to be female impersonators and other, probably other young um, gay and lesbian, LBGT um, young people? in our country because you know a lot of us or a lot of um, LGBT um, persons are very much 
so for us, what advice would you give to them? Okay, my advice would be not not strictly limited to female inclusion, just coming yes. out, mm -hmm. but our LGBT society. Um, I would advise everyone to learn to accept yourself and be proud of who you are. Yeah. Um, for once you can accept yourself, you are the one that would write your destiny. You are responsible for your destiny. Accepting yourself is the key to being accepted by others. Okay. Once you can accept yourself and portray yourself with confidence, you would then force people in your surrounding to respect you for who you are. Okay, that's, that's good advice, right? Um, so we know that Sawanis actually has some other upcoming stuff coming up again very soon, especially pageants, um, with one of his girls going away from Miss Global very soon. Global International. Right, so you guys can follow him on Facebook, you can follow the blog, follow Weibel, because Weibel blog is very important, and she also supports a lot of um, gay and lesbian people yeah. in Trinidad and Tobago, as well as transgender and LGBT movement. Um, so do follow us and continue and we'll give you an update. Um, anything else you want to say about Weibo? They can feel free to contact us, send us messages, inbox us. We are free and willing to answer all your questions. Okay, and so do you have anything else that you want to say before we close off? Okay, um, in closing, I'd like to say thank you very much to Weibel and Let's Support for having me here. Um, it's a privilege to be able to voice, you know, part of my life that would hopefully encourage and be useful to others in our LGBT society. Okay. Good luck to everyone and remember accepting yourself is the key to success. Okay, for now, bye! Bye! bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs>